How you doing, my friend? <laughs> doing great. You seem to be a glow. Uh, we're bringing in uh, December in a very festive fashion. Who's your little buddy there? Aaron uh, thought it was only appropriate that we would we would uh, don my bourbon with a scarf and cap this evening. You ever seen that before? I don't know what I'm going to do to my beer. Yeah, I don't know. We need a little robe, little mini robe for your beer. That's a great idea. Scott? That's a great idea. You know what I'm talking about right here. You just revealed yeah, them. That's a great idea. Like cap koozies. Yeah, exactly. How are you doing, uh, Michael Zeno? You're doing great, Scott Bossman. And why are we here? Who are we? Some people are new. They, didn't, they have never seen this before. Yeah, I, I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. We haven't done this in a long time. Well, you know, it was a really busy, um, you know, Thanksgiving. We did have a show. Some of you may have missed it, but you can catch it on uh, on YouTube. You can catch it on Netflix. It's the uh, we had the brunch on uh, on Sunday after Thanksgiving and before Cyber Monday. Yes, we did. We had the nightcap brunch. We had uh, Bloody Marys. Yours was very impressive, I must say. Yes, um, huge. It was. It was huge. Huge. It was huge. That's how they say it out where you are. Uh, but but like any good show, Mike, there needs to be a break in the action so the audience can anticipate the the next episode, right? Yes. The yes. goings on, the, the happenings later on. It's like a, there was a cliffhanger and we just left them all hanging for two weeks and here we are. Everybody can breathe a sigh of relief. We're back. And we're winding down our first year. I mean, we've, this has been a great year. A lot of crazy, great things have happened. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to have a year in review show soon because it's like 2019 is right upon us and it's going to be an awesome year. And, uh, you know, this has been a great year as well. It's, it's been a lot of fun. When did we start this, uh, March? I was trying to think about that. Yeah, we've been rolling uh, since, you know, pretty much the beginning of the year. Yeah, I know it's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so, for those of you who are not who who have never seen us before, we are uh, we are the Lame Geek guys, and this is Nightcap. It's just a chance for us to sit back and enjoy a cocktail. Where'd it go? There it went. Enjoy a cocktail and talk all things land investing. And the beauty of this is we talk a lot about land investing, but uh, we talk a lot of we're we're kind of philosophical sometimes. Yes. Yes, we think big thoughts. We think big thoughts. And that's what this business does for you. Yes. Like, it, it's not just tangible. The, the benefits of this business are not, not just tangible. They don't just show up in the bank account. There are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, intangible benefits as well. So Yeah, this business empowers you. I mean, you start to um, create a business out of literally nothing, right? lift up by your own bootstraps. You start to start do deals, make money, and eventually uh, pay a couple bills and then replace your, uh, your your fixed expenses with your passive income. Powerful things happen, not just financially, but mentally. Yeah, very good point, Scott. Yeah, that kind of segues into what we're talking about tonight, actually. Segway away. Segway away. Well, we just thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about... Um, what you what you need to invest to get into this business and really when you look at real estate models uh you don't need a lot of money to get started you do need time but that's with anything right and as you say and i love this time's coming no matter what it's true. A year from now is going to happen. 10 years from now is going to happen. My Kung Fu Tai Chi teacher years ago, I said, how long to be good at Tai Chi? 10 years. I'm like, 10 years? Who's got 10 years? He's like, 10 years is coming either way. Only difference is either you'll be good at Tai Chi or you won't. I mean, this next year is coming. 2019 is going to come and go. Will you have moved the needle in your life? Will you have created some passive income? Because the end of the year is coming, right? This next year is coming. It's going to go away. And it's like, what's happened? Have you taken the massive action? I love that. I, I'd never heard you say that before, uh, like two weeks ago. Yeah, it was a very good story. Uh, 
because it's true, you know, and uh, I think that a lot of powerful things can uh, conveyed in stories. We always talked about uh, how it's great for boot camp, right? You go and you listen to the success stories of the students there that, you know, you can relate to them. They're regular people and this business has moved their lives in powerful ways. And the story, right, that conveys the, the message and, and that brings the power. Yeah, for sure. Power. Power. Uh, so time is coming. Either way. Time is time is coming, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> like the storm. Yes, that's what we talk about when you put the <laughs> mailings out, right? Massive mailings. That's my favorite. You have massive mailings, right? Well, then there's a storm coming, Mr. Wayne. There's a storm coming. But it's a storm <laughs> that's good, right? You're going to have lots of people contact you. You're going to have a lot of intake. That's what Mark always says, right? New problem, good problem. New problem, good problem. That's right. So what we want to talk about tonight is uh, how logistically you can get started in this business with, without a lot of money. And if you have the time and you have the drive and you have the motivation, you have the why, you can start doing deals really quickly. And it can be a lot more lucrative than a lot of other real estate models out there. Yeah. It's a micro environment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we don't need to leverage other people's money. You don't need to go and have a ton of money. I mean, it's always kind of a cool topic because, uh, as I've said before, I started out in the hole about $40,000. So people say, how much money do I need to start? And I'm like, well, there are some traditional answers. But in my particular situation, it was a negative sign, a big one. Uh, but the business has the power to change that too. Yeah. So, Mike, when you started out in that hole, you needed to devote time to this, right? Yes. Time is huge when you're first starting out with this, but look at the resources available to you. Not only, I mean, we have the interweb, the all powerful interweb, I but we that. have, there, there's, there, there's a lot of content in this group. If you, if you go to the search icon in this group and you type in mastermind or office hours or round table or nightcap, I mean, there's a ton of content in here, right? Right. You get that content. All you have to do is invest your time in that content. You don't have to invest any money in that content. And then right. there's a YouTube channel. Uh, so, you know, you invest your time. Now, if you want to go a little bit more quickly, you invest a little bit of money with the investor toolkit or maybe flight school. Uh, and you will move forward more quickly. But even in the grand scheme of things, those monetary investments are really small. Minimal. Minimal. When you look at, and we'll talk about this later, when you look at your return on time invested and your return on cash invested. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, yeah, definitely minimal. I mean, and here's the thing though, it's like you want to scale your time, so you got to get some direction, right? Um, you know, you, you wouldn't uh, try to hit a target by, you know, I mean, I guess there are some super mastermind shooters that can close their eyes and boom, fire, hit a target, right? But for the average folk, you got to aim. You got to have a target. You got to have a method to hit that target. You got to have that rifle, right? Or uh, whatnot. And so you have to have this whole, you know, structure in place, right? And and then and then go for it, right? But uh, yeah, very important, right? The scale of that time. The scale of time is, is huge. And and you can you can use these tools to scale your time. You can, these free tools, uh, you can use, yeah. you can, you can use the investor toolkit to scale your time, the new and improved investor toolkit, which, uh, I'm not, I, you know, it was, it was somewhat bare bones three years ago. Now it's like this beautiful interface. It's very organized. It's right. got an amazing feel to it. Uh, and still when you're looking at the investment needed to get the toolkit, it's when you're looking at the grand scheme of things over time, uh, and, and knowing what that will result in is very minimal. So, so you need, what do you need, Mike, to get started in this? You need time, right? You need, you need, you need, re, you need resources, which there are a lot of, right? You need the drive and you need the motivation and you need the why yeah, you need to believe. I mean, in the beginning, I, I always say people start out with like, Hey, heard about this land investing. Jeez. Is that real? There's another like late night infomercial where they wear, fancy suits and show their cars and their houses off and encourage me that I can someday do that. No, it's not. It's really just a, it's a, it's a true and tried method to make money, right? 
it's it's just a, a, a way that we do it that works really well because we scale our time. Then the next step is, well, do I see myself doing that? Could I see myself doing that? Because there's a lot of ways to generate money out there. Um, and this happens to be a very good way to generate passive income. And you begin to evaluate whether or not it suits your um, your aptitude, your needs. Do you want to do it? And if that meets, it's like, okay, you believe it's real. You know it would be good for you. How do you get rolling quickly, right? That's the next thing, right? So that's, that's what we're talking about here, right? Uh, don't forget, this. you brought up a great point the other day. A lot of people don't realize what we have on the phone, Scott, the app. Yeah, we have a Land Geek app. Download it now. If you haven't seen it right now, like right now, massive action and download that app. Download the Land Geek app. You have access to all of the best passive income model uh, podcasts and the art of passive income model podcasts. And how many of us have gotten sucked into the Mark Podolsky podcast whirlwind? This is not a bad thing. No. This is how many of us have, Scott Todd says Mark Podolsky was his best friend because he list, listened to the, like 30 podcasts all in a row, right? I am guilty of that. You are guilty of that. Yes. The, the thing about these podcasts with Mark Podolsky, especially his older podcast, the Best Passive Income Model podcast is the stories, the student success stories in there were what motivated me and Mark Podolsky's passion in his voice when he is trying to convince every single one of his guests on his podcast that he has the best passive income model, it made me believe and it, it is true. <laughs> yeah, no, very powerful. And you know, listen to those, go back and, and you want to immerse yourself in this experience to see if it fits you. So stop listening, stop paying attention, stop getting in the game. Yes, and there's uh, there's no better time for that than in the car. How many how many people drive thirty minutes, forty five minutes, an hour to work? Just one direction, right? Um, and and then you could just turn that into an educational experience, right? I mean, a lot of people yeah. probably use Audible and whatnot, but download this app, start listening to these podcasts. And start feeling the, the difference that it can make in your life to really take something that will bring passive income. You know, the one-time right. transaction with a multiple return payments. Uh, it's incredible. I mean, uh, we have a really great pro We also teach a system that can handle that because anybody could do a deal here, a deal there. But if we're talking scaling, you need to have a system, a framework. So we are experts at that as well. It's just, a, it's phenomenal. Right. Uh, Jake Martin just commented, and by the way, Jake, nice to see you on here. I think you just joined flight school, so congratulations. But guess how long Jake Martin's commute is, Mike? 90 minutes, 90 minutes one way. Wow. Now, I can almost guarantee Jake something. If he listens to Mark Podolsky 90 minutes times two a day, and he listens to podcasts, uh, Best, of pa best Passive Income Model, Art of Passive Income Model, um, Roundtable Podcasts, Mastermind Calls, Nightcap. If he listens 90 minutes twice a day and he combines that with action, Jake Martin, you will not be commuting 90 minutes one way in a couple of years. Yeah, it's true. It's what you pay attention to, right? You have the ability to focus your attention on something, right? And we get into these daily routines and daily habits and, you know, some of them are positive, some of them not so much, but add another positive one. And this, this little addition, this additional habit, right. Of listening to the podcast alone will begin to inspire you and, and it'll help you think differently. And when you think differently, you'll take different action, take different action. You'll have different results because if you're doing the same thing every day, you know that the result's going to be pretty much the same thing. Right. It's, it's right. no secret. Right. There's no there's no secret punchline. You do this, continue to do this as you'll continue to experience this. Right. Change it up a little bit, you know, and, and see what happens. Change your mindset. Also change the actions and then change your um, results. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So. All right. So we've established you need some time to get involved in this. You need time to learn the business model. Uh, 
and it's really not that difficult of a model. But what's difficult, Mike? Uh, ac action. Action is difficult. Taking the action that is difficult. Uh, it's it's you know there's no information gap. There's an ex execution gap. He's pulled up. I complete. You complete me, science. See, this is a love story, folks. Jerry Maguire. Commonly misinterpreted as a, as a sports story, it's a love story, isn't it? It's a love story. Not taught me that. You complete me. Much about it. I just so completed it twice. First of all, I knew the answer. Second of all, I knew you pulling out the you complete me paper. Bang. We spent a lot of time together. That's good, though. You know, speaking of which, great point. Everybody's heard. Surround yourself. Uh, I'll take a look at the five people. It's just a number, right? Four, five, six, seven, what, three. Whoever you surround yourself with on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, that's going to influence your mindset. So be mindful of who you are surrounding yourself by. Now, Scott and I have made a decision to surround ourselves by different people, you know, many of them virtually, right? And we see them four times a year and whatnot. But, uh, you know, you have Mark Podolsky. You have Scott Todd. Uh, you have um, Tate Litchfield, Eric Peterson. You have Mimi Schmidt. You have Diana Dybal. She's amazing. I don't know how she's, she keeps things so organized. Uh, she, she's amazing. So you surround yourself by these action takers. And guess what? You begin to change your mindset. So you really need to pay attention to that, right? It's really important. Surround yourself by a different set of mind, uh, a different mindset, uh, a different group of people that think a certain way and see how that affects you. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's that's another thing that you can do that doesn't cost a lot of money, right? You can find people uh, to to surround yourself with that bring you to another level. This group does that. Right. Let's 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 talk a little bit, Mike, about uh, the investment you need money wise to get into this business. Okay. Now, you can you can learn a t you can learn a ton on the Facebook group, on YouTube, uh, with the Investor Toolkit, which is a very small investment. Then, then what you need to do is you need to start taking action. And even if you send 100 mailers out a week, mm -hmm. 100 mailers out a week, and you, you hoof it, you do it yourself, you, you mail merge, you, you figure out how to do that, uh, like I did three years ago from people on YouTube, uh, because I didn't know how to do it. And uh, you start uh, licking and sticking envelopes and using the letter folder machine, which is the first automated tool that Scott Todd introduced to me. <laughs> uh, it costs like 60 bucks a week to send out 100 mailers. 60 bucks. You gotta spend more than that on coffee. Coffee and liquor. Yeah, you will. Think about it. You will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> the reality kidding. is that it's not that big, right? You can redirect those funds. And the only way to really stop moving the needle is to mail, 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 mail. And then the other side, when you get property, that's marketing. But then initially to create the deal flow. Uh Oh, where is it? Where is it? To create the deal flow. And as we know, deal flow yeah. solves everything. The only way to really create that deal flow is to mail, 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 and mail some more. Consistently, Scott Todd talks about that 100 a week, 20 a day. And like Scott just said, you could hoof it in $60 a week, and you can start to move the needle in this business. And you can find, anybody can find 60 bucks a week. There is something in your life that you are spending too much money on. Maybe, maybe not too much money on. There's something in your life that you are spending money on that you could reallocate yes. to mailings, cable, data on your cell phone, coffee, beer, eating out, kids, video games, whatever. There is something that you can use to reallocate. Yes. We all have it. Absolutely. And, you know... This is something that uh, if you do consistently, it will change everything because the deals will start to come um, and the counter offers will come and the accepted offers will come and you will then start to move to the next phase, which is, you know, reviewing those deals and saying, okay, are these worth my time to, and my money? 
That's the due diligence phase. When there's only five steps, Scott Todd goes over and over and again. We got the, uh, you know, the mailing. Now it's a quick due diligence. That's very simple and efficient the way we do that, right? Very simple. So here's my next question for you. When you need to do due diligence on a property, how much does that cost you, Mike, when you are doing it? Pretty much nothing. Pretty much nothing. You need some time. It's a couple of phone calls and a little computer research, something with well within the reach of everyone. And, 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 and the cost is zero. The cost is zero. The cost is zero. Uh, phone calls. You use the interweb to find information. I love you calling it the interweb. I feel like it's like an Austin Powers movie when you say that. I love <laughs> the interweb. One million dollars. It's kind of an inside joke between my wife and I, between Aaron and I, because um, back when we were first dating, we were talking about the, the power of Google. And I'm like, that's, you know, that's a really powerful search engine. The interweb is really powerful. So it's just kind of an inside joke. I like the word the in, interweb. I like it too. I think it brings a good, uh, conveys a good feeling. All right. So due diligence, you don't need a lot of money. Lauren Lynch just uh, posted a question. She would like to know, Mike, will you guys go over how you do your due diligence? I have a motivated seller right now. Right. So here's the thing. There's a few things you need to know right away. First of all, um, you know, can the person you're talking to, can they convey the property to you? So if the property deal is uh, to, uh, if the person who owns the property is uh, John Smith, are you talking to John Smith? Hi, Aaron. Oh, it's so festive. Is, is, that, his, she's, is that his Christmas present of, of football? Is that his Christmas present? You didn't wrap it. No, she's just, uh, she's decorating the Packers Christmas tree. Ah. Uh, you guys are real sports fans. Yeah, we're sports fans here in Wisconsin. We have no choice. It's like you guys in Boston. You have no choice. I have a choice. <laughs> Laura, Laura laughed. I heard her. All right. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. You were so talking about John your... Smith owns the is. So you want to get a copy first and foremost of the deed, right? Very simple. Is the person that I'm talking to the person that can convey ownership to me? If it's John Smith on the deed and you're talking to Bill Smith, you're like, uh, Bill, who's John? And he's like, oh, that was my dad. And, uh, you know, I paid the taxes. Now I own the property. Maybe not. Right. You got to you got to you got to make sure you're talking to the right person. But 90, you know, most of the time you are. That's the great thing. These are people that own the property. It's OK. John Smith. OK, I'm talking to John Smith. Now, how are the taxes? Does the property have any overdue taxes? And if so, how much? Now, our model is areas where the taxes, even if they're overdue by a few years, it's still very minimal, right? We're not talking a lot of big taxes. So you want to make sure you're talking to the right person that can convey you ownership. And you also want to make sure the taxes are good. Now, you want to make sure the use is good. But here's the thing. If you're following what we do, you're pretty targeted in your mailing. So you probably already know the use ahead of time. Now, if you don't, that's okay. You want to find out, can they camp? Can they RV? Can they use it some way? But typically, if you're doing this in another way, uh, you would target those people. Laser focus, right? That was awesome. That was just like, that was, that was beautiful, Aaron. <laughs> Mike says it's beautiful, hon. It's a, it's a laser target into a certain area. So really, if you do that correctly, there's only a few things you need to know, right? Um, it, you know, you might want to look and see if there's access, but here's the reality. I've sold landlock properties. They still sell. There's value there. So um, you know, I had a discussion the other day with someone. It's like, well, it's platted out, right? And I see the roads there, but they're not actually there. Well, they have legal access, okay? So that's okay. Maybe someone hasn't bladed the road there yet, but there's still access. So honestly, Lauren, there's only a few things you really need to know. Um, and then you evaluate that against the current market. You do your, you know, or remember when you do your mailings, you get a kind of a basic idea of what it is. You don't want to overthink it. Now you're like, okay, offer this person $500. Let's take a look. Is what's the value? Let's double check that. And once you know that, and you know the back tax, you know they can convey, and you know the use, it's game on. So simple. It didn't take much. It doesn't take much. <laughs> All right, dude. Hey, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the discussion. We're about we're about halfway through the show. You know what that means? Okay, time. It's time. Because I'm thirsty. Here it comes. Drum roll, please. It's Matt Forbes. 
Jen, hey, it's how time we doing? for the refill segment. Yeah. You're blinding us. You're blinding us with your light. Oh, my God. Look at that. That is... Let's talk about that bourbon right there. Let, why don't you give a little little insight to the group here? What are we? We're drinking light right. up LED bourbon. Yeah, we're having some full batch 1792 bourbon from uh, Barton, Kentucky. Wow! Just we, all sorts of. We celebrating Barton something? Distillery. Uh, no, not really. Just uh, you know, nightcap. We've been gone for two weeks. I know. Um, it's won all sorts of awards this year, so I thought I'd uh, give it a shot. We have this amazing liquor store here in La Crosse. I love going. Uh, there's, you know, there's one on every block, but this one is the best. Hmm. And uh, yeah, on Wisconsin sounds great. Go, yeah, on Wisconsin for sure. Uh, so yeah, there's a great whiskey selection. So that's what I got tonight. Excellent. All right, this all right. what are you drinking, Matt? Uh, I am drinking uh, Bully Boy. Old fashioned in a bottle. Hey, it comes in a bottle already made. Oh my God, Zano! How is it? It's freaking amazing. Wait a minute, I'm putting, Laura has a wait. Bully, bully boy. It's called Bully Boy. It's a distillery in Boston. Um, and we went and took a tour with my friend, and uh, we were like, "Oh, we'll try the old fashioned." I bet that is, you know, horrible. It's amazing. You literally, you're like, old fashioned done. That's it on ice. How do you spell their name? I'm putting on Laura's action list. Can you put a link in the comments, Matt? <laughs> okay. I will uh, I will I will do that. It's called Bully Boy. Is uh dis I can't spell distillery, Jesus. Uh, uh old fashioned. Yeah, I had my liquor store bring it in. They were like, Oh, we have we have their gin, and I'm like, Well, that's good. I go, just buy a case and I'll buy half the case now. And uh, you know, and they've already sold out. So yeah, it's good. There it is. Uh, anyway, I want some. All right, we'll raise a glass there, boys, and uh, you know, have have a cocktail for everybody who's out there working hard. Laura Lynch. Had, well, somebody had one more question, which is, uh, she said he says he just paid off the taxes. Super duper. Call the county and go ahead and confirm that for us. That'd be great. Yeah, we don't want to take their word for it. We want to double. You know, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, something to confirm. Uh, what is it? Uh, what's that saying? Why is it escaping me? I'm having a senior moment again. Uh oh. Trust, trust and confirm. That's not how it goes. It's simple. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. Trust but verify. Yes. Trust, trust but verify because Lauren, it is yeah. true. Uh, I've spoken to folks in the past, and you always want to give people the benefit of the doubt, and they sound like amazing, honest, truthful, transparent people. And then for whatever reason, there tends to be an issue with the property. Uh, so I think we've all had instances like that. Zeno, you probably have, but I was on the verge of purchasing a property and I find out, Hey, there's $1,500, uh, in back taxes on the thing. And I want to pay him, you know, 500 and he says it's free and clear and it's not. <laughs> so it's Rutt definitely Rutt something Rutt. you want to check with the County. What's that? I said, Rutt 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 Rutt. Rutt. that's why I do. Rutt. 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 Yes, exactly. Oh, oh, look, so, oh. Oh, look at that. The uh, librarian's back. The professor. Yes. I only do that so I can do that. I put them <laughs> on so I can make a, a point. I go. <laughs> You're not the only one. Whoa. Yeah. Wait, those are, well, hold on. Those are your Clark Kent ones from the, from the Halloween episode. There's no glass in there. <laughs> they're, they're, they're right up here by my Batman mask. Do you see Batman? Look, look, look. see, look. Real glasses, see? Real glasses for blind people. For blind people, yeah. <laughs> well, Scott, Matt, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Scott, let's, let's keep rolling with it. We're, we're talking about the... Uh, well, okay, so we're to due diligence. It really doesn't cost a lot of money. It costs a little bit of time. I love it. We're and, going over the five steps and what's the true cost of them. I love it. And yeah, and, and, and I mean, uh, so, but you do need to know how to do it. So again, the resources are there, but it all depends on, you know, oh, Matt Forbes. Can I say how I did, can I say how I do it personally? Please do. Right. So, so um, Lauren, you reminded me that I talked to a seller today who sent me back this note. And although I don't think I'm going to buy the property, um, I send, I fill out a form. And uh, the land geek DAs just do it. <laughs> it takes me like 
uh, the time for you to write that to the time I came on this episode. So 60 seconds uh, for me to do all of my, uh, my due diligence. Otherwise, it would take my wife probably two hours. So uh, awesome. it's all about delegation. Good Fantastic. point. Good point. Yeah. It, so, so that's, a, that's a beautiful thing about, uh, about this community, about Mark Kodolsky, about Scott Todd, is they are visionary and they know, I mean, from experience, how powerful this business model is. So, so what do they do? They create tools for us to use uh, that save our time. Uh, because Matt Forbes, I will tell you three years ago when I was in coaching and I did not have tools like that, due diligence was my biggest pain point. It's not that it was hard. It was just, it took a lot of time during my day as a physical therapist working full time. You know, when am I going to call the county to get this information? And at that time I did not have any VAs, that type of thing. So, so the fact, so you're spoiled. I hate you. I don't even want to, I don't uh, want to no. deal with you. hundred oh, percent. Like seriously. every. Don't Every work. time you talk about you hating VA, or not VA, uh, doing due diligence, I'm always just like, oh, I'm so glad I started this when I did. Now that right. said, you're at, you know, you just quit your job and like, you know, you're living the dream and like, you know, no. you're the man and, and I'm just, you know, working, you know, three extra hours a day trying to get this thing going. But uh, the, the pain point that you guys had, I will never really know because my wife did it you know, for the first few properties until we really got involved and then, and now they just do it. And so for me, it's a click of a button and it's, yeah. it's a no brainer. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. And I'm really happy that I don't do it. Cause I think that would be one of those things where like Scott Todd says, if you're, if you're ready to quit, you need to have somebody else do it for you. Right. Yeah. I think I would have gotten through due diligence one time and then would have been right. like, oh, cause I just can't do that kind of stuff. But even, even if you're ready to quit due diligence, if you're ready to quit scrubbing a list or, or acquiring a list, mm. when you're looking at business expenses, Mike, how much are you paying someone to compile a list for you? How much are you paying someone to do due diligence for you? And then you compare that to other type of costs in other businesses. I mean- Extremely minimal, minimal. Minimal again, right? So what, what we're getting at here is that the, the cost associated with getting into this business, minimal. The cost associated with running this business, minimal. Here's the other thing. People say, well, I need money to buy a property. Guess what? You choose the price point. You choose. If you, you know we buy 25 cents in a dollar, you want to buy a property for $500 that sells cash for 2000 bang, there you go. Uh, you can even get more aggressive. I'll find something that's selling for $1,000 and buy it for two fifty dollars or less. You choose the, print, the point, the purchase price. Uh, so, you know, you have that power. You don't have to have, I mean, it's these are micro purchases when it comes to real estate. Yeah, I mean, I never, ever, ever would have thought you could buy an acre of land for $200. Or $100. Or $100. <laughs> or, right? or nothing. Right? What do we call it, boys? You get it for nothing. What do you call it? Remember the show. Uh oh, it's my, a good my question. kid's favorite candy. The Skittle. A good, good for nothing. No, it's the two dollar Skittle or something. Two dollar Skittle. Oh, oh, the two dollar Skittle. One dollar. The one dollar Skittle. We forgot about that. What are you doing? That was like in the show one. Well, I'm a, I'm a just a diehard freaking fan. <laughs> I remember this stuff. One dollar Skittle. That was a blast from the past. That Love was, that. and you know what, Zeno, you left an you left an impact on that man right there. You I remember I, that? Uh, that you know, it's funny when you guys started the show. I I had just signed up for um, flight, school. flight school. Yeah, I think so. Um, I was like trying to consume everything I could, like listening to all like. Mark's old podcast and then his old, old podcast, right? Yeah. Um, he's had, you know, he's gone through a couple iterations. I was, I was like listening to all of those. I sent Zeno a LinkedIn note uh, that was like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? No response on LinkedIn. Oh, I what? Check my LinkedIn. Or LinkedIn. So I, I went back and deleted it, Zeno. Oh, um, I did that to you and to Jeff. And I just started to consume sort of everything I could. And uh, I remember sitting on the couch in the morning because 
it's you know nightcaps on at like what 3 30 a.m something horrible um <laughs> and i would watch it on my tv because i could just cast it onto my tv and i was like wow oh, these guys are like this is crazy this is good we're on the big screen and you guys were on the big on the big dog yeah so how much did it cost you matt to learn from us <laughs> i bow down to your greatness i'm i'm totally uh, kidding listen no. we, 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 we I'm totally went, kidding so listen we're at the five steps we've gone over number one number two which is the mailing the due diligence now the closing what's the cost of the closing scott the closing mm. the, the cost is uh you if if you have a copy of the prior deed you can copy that deed word for word along with the vesting information along with the legal description right you use these bad boys on microsoft word and uh create your own deed right and then you record it with the county 20 30 bucks so there you go minimal there you go let's talk about advertising the, fo the, fourth, step, the fourth step is free the marketing tools. free tools for advertising what'd you say free tools for everybody free tools for everybody <laughs> free tools for everybody facebook free craigslist free mailchimp free and moto free Is there another one? No, we like you're on a roll. We're just letting you go. I, I thought there was like a six coming. I was so excited. Like, well, I, was waiting, I was hoping you guys crap. would complete me and come and up with again, something it comes else. Down, again, it comes down to your own time. Like, you know, more mailing, more properties, more ads, more sales. So uh, it comes down to your time. Yeah, look, I mean, look at, look at Bosman. If Bosman can do this, anybody can do this. Right? Wow. That's, that's what that's I've been saying to myself the whole time. So nice of you. In other words, he inspires you. <laughs> right this yep. stuff like this stuff overall it's it, you know it's not that complicated it's hard you know it's it's hard right there's no this is like uh you know you don't just walk in and you just start buying deals and it takes time but it's not it's not that complicated it's really not you just we gotta, sometimes make it we sometimes make it more complicated than oh, it needs yeah. to be like so you know yeah. what else i love mike zeno is uh like oh well, i know what else i love mike zeno End of story. I love it. There you go. Did Laura like, just throw up a little bit in her mouth? Many, I did that, but that's what Scott said. I heard it. Okay. How many how many people do we talk to, Mike Zeno, who who are so concerned about like getting a website up and running, right? For for their property. Yes. So guess so, what? That, go ahead. No, it's I know so, you're gonna complete me on this. Well, you know, the thing is that there's a few things. Well, number one you're focusing on the wrong thing in the beginning, right? If you got a mail, you got a market, having a wonderful website and nobody's seeing it and it just sits there and you can go show your friends and look at it and go, look at my website, great. You sell any property yet? No, but I got a great website, right? Mailing and marketing, you got to market, 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 market. Those are the two things that move the business. When you have extra time, you go ahead and you can build that website and all that. And there's so many easy tools out there, right, Scott? I mean, it's not doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a coder you don't have to even clunk around with wordpress anymore there's so many options yeah so many options uh i mean google drive is a favorite you go to google drive you create a document uh, you put some nice pictures in there some property information you share that link with people right you don't need a website yeah you don't need a fancy website yeah Oh, and look at, so now we're so far into this, right? Uh, so far into this, we are, you know, say, you know, you sent out a hundred letters, so you sent out a couple hundred letters, your $120 there. You, you did your own due diligence. Uh, you close in the property. So you got another 25 and you buy a $500 property. So you're like, I don't know, say you're $700 into this, right? You know, that that's really the um, cost of acquisition, right? And then you're going to market it for free. And then when you sell it, boom, now the magic comes, right? Uh, it, it's really, again, it's not really uh, cost prohibitive, right? That you can, you can lift yourself up by your own bootstraps in this business. It's a micro environment. And then uh, you have GeekPay to help track your note, $9 a month to help track your note. Yep. You charge a $10 monthly note fee. Yeah. I'm making money on GeekPay now. You make money. It's a profit center, as Mark says. It's a profit generating center. Yeah, it is. And then, okay. So, you know, we, we've talked a lot about this. Uh, 
you can get into this for hundreds of dollars. You can purchase property for hundreds of dollars. We are not talking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars here like you are with buying a duplex or buying a multifamily apartment building or buying a franchise. We are talking hundreds of dollars. Yep. It's crazy, right? You can get in and just, when I, when I told my buddy, my old, my old business partner, what I was doing, first of all, I, like everyone else you ever tell is like You're crazy, right? Standard, like standard operating procedure. I buy and sell land. You're crazy. Okay. Let's move on. Um, and he, and I sort of explained it to him and I was about halfway through and he goes, so why don't you just go buy a ton of cheap land and just sell it on eBay and make buy for buy for 300 bucks and sell it for 450 bucks. And I go, I, you absolutely can. You absolutely could go and do that all day long. I, you know, I'm looking to, I'm going a different road, but I could do that. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to go do that. And I'm like, all right, great. That's fine. We'll meet in the middle. That sounds good. But, you know, there's a lot of ways you can get started in this. It doesn't cost a fortune by any stretch. No. You just got to go do it. Just right? That's and it's the execution. It's like yeah. there's knowing about it and then knowing how to do it. And then there's doing it. I mean, the three different levels. I know about it. Okay, great. And then I learn, okay, now I know how to do it. Okay, great. Now do it. Execute. Yeah. That's exactly right. And then like do it to the it. Tool, the, the tools that Mark Podolsky has given us with the investor toolkit and flight school. I mean, then, you know, if, if you want to accelerate your learning, if you want to leverage your time, if you want to use some geeky tools that help you do this business, you're still looking at what a couple thousand dollars to get started in this business. And then, uh, right. If you sell, a couple properties on terms, hundred dollars down, hundred dollars a month for seventy-two months. What happens? Yeah, what happens if you get to a, just a thousand dollars a month passive in a year or two? I mean, a thousand dollars a month, right? That's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars over ten years. If my math is correct, I mean that—that's just there's two kinds, three kinds of math There it is. You know it. Tell me it. Here we go. What's the those, who, those who can add and those who can't. Show is like my uncle, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right. I think we, we're beating a dead horse here. So All right. since we're beating a dead horse, I think we, 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 we have a couple segments, actually. All right, let's uh, have a couple segments. We'll wrap this up. Let's oh, do my favorite right. segment. I'll take right, so Wrap it up. I got, a, I got a couple Facebook quotes of the week here. Oh, nice. Nice. The first one, let me see if I can share, share my screen with you here. Be a shame if it stopped blinking at me. Oh, yeah, Kenyon, yeah. All right. right. So I, I got to give a shout out to Kenyon here. So Kenyon, uh, Kenyon recently uh, finished flight school. He recently went into coaching, but it, he threw this up in the, in the group. I believe it was during Thanksgiving week. Uh, Cause I, I seem to remember, remember that, but he said, uh, you really can do this business anywhere. Just sold a property sailing the high seas. And for, for Kenyon's job, he's, he's, I believe in the Navy. He's on the seas and uh, he's doing deals out on the Atlantic Ocean. He seized the moment on the seas. Wow. Yes, he did. Yeah, we should we should stop and say, right, there's a lot of, uh, you know, in the greater real estate world. So I know like you guys are heavy land, but I wasn't, but I was still, I was in the real estate sort of investing world for a long time. And, you know, military members, um, and I don't know with Kenny, if he's reserve or if he's in full time, but a lot of them, you know, do the whole apartment thing and they get stationed at a base and they buy a house and then they get stationed somewhere else and they rent the house and they forcibly, whether they like it or not, become real estate investors and sort of get with it. The land thing. I mean, if you're a military person, the land route is so suited for you for all the reasons why it's great for you know, for Zeno to be a firefighter and compact a, a normal job into a few days in a week. Military is like that. Uh, I mean, granted, you work seven days a week, you know, good times, go Uncle Sam. But you get that time where you could put in an hour a day or two hours a day, right, from anywhere. You can do all this stuff remote. I mean, right, we got people in, in the Langy community or, you know, travel full time. And they do this. So we should not overlook that. It's odd we never talk about the military like that. But um, 
it's a great, it's a great, uh, you know, way to be in the land business and have, you know, and keep that full-time job. That you great sign point. Up. But yeah. Yeah. Zeno, I think we should have an episode sometime about, um, how you can do this business abroad because we have all, all types of those people as well. So we, we need to have somebody, we need to have a special guest. Well, uh, I got some in mind. There you go. See, I got someone in mind. We could have a twofer and uh, talk about how, how you can do this business abroad. Yeah, Zeno, right? I think we have an episode sometime about um, how Echo. you can do this abroad. What's going on? Someone's got their Facebook plan. Me. It's not me. That was that was Matt. <laughs> Matt. Well, he well, wants to hear it. He loved it so much he wanted to hear it twice. I wanted to hear it two oh, times. So nice. No, I was trying to see if there are any other comments. And um we got one. So, no, no, no. Let's do one other let's do one other uh quote of the week because right. I, I want to answer the question for Jason Parker, can we? Yes. All right. So Jason Parker, uh he posted this a little while ago today, I think. When we get ready to purchase a property, well, there's, first of all, there's a couple methods. There's the direct method, which is preferred, and there's the notary service method, right? Mm -hmm. What notary service do you suggest me using? So, I, okay, sorry, so I, I thought you were asking me. No, no, there's a second part of the question, so you finish the first part. Yeah, basically all I do is go on and just, you can just use Google or Yelp and look for people who are reviewed in the area. I mean, you used to use Notary Pro and all that, but really the best luck I've had, just search online and see, you know, the reviews. There's reviews out there. Then you call them up and it's done. Bang. You might want to call a couple to get pricing, but sometimes they will try to gouge you. That's the reality. Um, it shouldn't cost more than 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I've Yeah, 123notary.com uh, is what I typically use. And... Uh, the nice thing about that is they have thousands of notaries in their database. You uh, basically Google map the address of your, of your seller and Google map the address of your notary, see which one is closest and, you know, spend five, 10 minutes finding the cheapest one. I've, I've had mobile notaries for 15 bucks. I've had mobile notaries for 50 bucks. Um, so 123notary.com. And the nice thing about a mobile notary, and this gets into his second part of the question, is how does it work? So he, he basically is asking the logistics of it. So the way, Jason, that I have used a mobile notary in the past is basically they are a walking escrow agent for me. So <laughs> I, I contact them. What's so funny, Forbes? No, it's, I, a, great, no, it's a really great way to put it, right? Because they, they perform that function for you for you know, 40 bucks. Pretty good for a redneck. Oh, uh, anyway, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Let's no, no, let's no, no. We'll rewind the tape. Alone. Let's rewind <laughs> the tape. I called Bosman a redneck earlier because he came in with his trucker hat on. That's not politically correct. Let's. Uh -huh. I'll leave it alone. That was that was not nice of me. I should not have said that. It was anyway, in the moment. We forgive you. Walking escrow agent, right? So. Here's what you do, Jason Parker. You contact somebody on 123notary.com and you say to them, uh, Mrs. Smith, I would love for you to be my notary. Can I send you uh, the documents electronically? You print them off. Can I send you a check? And you meet the seller in a physical location of your choice. And once the seller has notarized the deed, you hand them a check. There you go. That's how the mobile notary works. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Not preferred, but it happens. So there, there you go. You got to do it, right? Fifty bucks, right. sixty bucks to to get the deal. So what? Yeah. Making yeah. huge returns. Zeno, what's so funny? I am smiling because I appreciate you. I think you're tired. You need no. to go to bed now. I think but <laughs> Laura, put him to bed. Roberto Chavez says, great to see you guys. Expressnotary.com is great, too. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, Expressnotary.com. Let's, let's click on that. There they are. America's nationwide notary solution. What do they say? Uh, Matt Forbes, you were talking earlier about the, uh, the webcam notary service, which we, we had talked about that a couple of years ago, two, three years ago. I remember talking about that on a mastermind call with Mark or something like that, but... And at the time, I think it was quite expensive, but 
I'm wondering if anyone is using uh, notaries in that regard now, throw some comments up, tell us how much it costs. But again, in, in, uh, in, in reference to what this whole episode is about, I bet it's not that much. Yeah, I bet it's come down in price. I mean, you would think that it would be fairly inexpensive to have somebody set up a Zoom like this, right? And and run that stuff. I think they're the Can legality. I show you my ID? Right. That's all they do. Yeah. Right. Seriously. I don't know. I'll look. I'll try to find that out for next week because it would be interesting to know what they cost. I my gut would be they would be, you know, pretty inexpensive. Twenty five bucks. If know? I'm in my bathrobe or my smoking jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 I'm able to notarize a document. Is that worth the cost to me of twenty dollars? I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Zeno, have we done our duty? We have. I think it's time to swivel. Well, let's do one last segment. All right. Yeah, we got to do the bottom line. It's my favorite segment of the week, and we haven't done it yet. So it, it is time. Oh, Sarah Ant is watching. No. Sarah, Sarah we Sarah miss Ant? you. Oh, uh, Sarah Ant, are you going to be? Soon. Sarah Ant hung out. We hung out and had dinner at the last boot camp. I hope she's at the next one. Sarah Ant, by the way, you need to interview her. She has singly handedly the greatest job of all time. It's amazing. Yeah, she's she's uh, living the dream. She right? is living the dream. Yeah, T training horses and she's she's a dog. selling land and yeah, something to do with dogs. Very pricey. We'll, <laughs> we'll have her on. Yeah, we'll have her on at some point. We'll she's we'll fine. talk to her. But first, before we have Sarah Anton, we need to have the Boston Legacy segment. Yes, yes. This is oh boy, and gentlemen. This is why I stay up until 11. I hope it's not donkeys again. Donkeys, hey, that yeah. One. That was a big fail. That was fine. So the Boston Legacy segment is when we uh, we all talk about uh, a Bostonian word. And uh, here's my favorite, by the way. My favorite. Cheetah. Don't play cards with a cheetah. Cheetah. Don't, don't play cards with a cheetah. That's a cheetah. Don't play Scrabble with a cheetah. <laughs> yeah, Scrabble. Words with friends. I did that Come for Ben. Back. I did that for Ben. That's nice of you. I appreciate that. Scrabble's coming back. <laughs> I have so many Boston Legacy segments right here. It's like craziness. So the Boston Legacy segment is when uh, Scott spells a word and Mike pronounces the word, and we all hear how it is likely properly, mispronounced. Properly pronounced. Right, right, right. So here's the word for tonight. Are you ready? I am ready. S U G. <laughs> A R. Bring me some sugar. Sugar. Bring me some sugar. Bring me some sugar, little honey bee. That's a Tom well, Petty song. There's a great song one sugar. said, "Pour some sugar on me." Pour some sugar on me. Sugar on me. Uh, that, who's that by? Def Leppard. Def Leppard. Def Leppard. What year? 1989. No, way before that. Jesus. I'm going to say 19. 87. Ooh. Forbes is looking. 87. Yes. Oh my God. Look yes. at that. How do you do that? I don't know. I just do it. Wow. That's the makings of a great board game. My God. It should, it, it's like, it should be a, a, a game on TV where you need to be smarter than Scott. Scott, when's the last time you were on Jeopardy? Just between us girls in the Speaking corner. Speaking of Jeopardy. Mike Zeno. Now he's exciting. We are going to be having a Jeopardy episode soon. Ooh. And you will be playing Matt Forbes. <laughs> what is I'm out of town that did that week for my real job? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's going to be you and two other contestants Ooh. participating in Nightcap Jeopardy. We don't know yet. Okay. But yeah. anyway, yeah, that's uh, ready to crush it. Let's do it. We're gonna have we're gonna have an '80s. Uh, song category for sure oh that's anyway, fine 90 percent related to land but we'll have an 80s song category i'll get my boom box and i'll be able to hold it up i'm, I'm ready nice yeah oh great movie I, he did kickboxing in that movie that's why i loved it 
What movie? Say anything. Say anything. Well, it had to be 1987. No, it's a little early, Mike. I'm going to say 1988. 89. Oh. oh, I was going to say 89. And then you didn't. 80, yeah, 89. Yeah. I told you it was early, though. Scott? Yes. You complete me. Oh. You complete me, my friend. It was Matt, a good episode. Look at you, too. We're so happy to have hey, you uh, here, Matt. Hug it out. <laughs> hug it out. Look at you guys. Oh. I think for all the metrics people out there, we should actually come up with a spreadsheet of how much it costs to get into this business. I think Let's Roberto Chavez would volunteer to do something like that. <laughs> it seems like something he wants to do, like tomorrow. As my brother yeah, once think... said, "Is volunteer and voluntold." Voluntold. Voluntold. I like that. All right. All right. Well, there it is, guys. Are we ready for the swivel out? What's your, what's your toast from the night? Oh, you're the, for the best night. postmaster I know. You know what? I'm I'm sick of you pawning things off on me. <laughs> I get it. Okay. <laughs> Here's the five steps to success. Success is five steps away. Stop walking. Cheers. 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 Oh, you guys are the best. Cheers. Cheers.